Hi, fashion dolls. It is finally Friday, TGIF, September 1st. We are now in a new month, fashion dolls, and our very special guest has been on the show previously. We didn't really get a chance to get down in depth and do our interview. We had some things, so I'm super excited for today's interview with him you might know him as the host of the One Mike Night podcast. He's an actor. He's a model. He's a speaker. He's a poet. He's an award-winning actor, and I'm excited to have him here in the dollhouse with us. He is a familiar face that's been on the show previously, but he is back in detail to get into this interview, Fashion Dolls. So without further ado, let's welcome our very special guest, Marcos Luis. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Thank you. It is such a pleasure to have you here again in the dollhouse. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes. So before we get into this interview, how has 2023 been for you so far? Uh, 2023 has been amazing, I have to say. Uh, yeah, it's been very creative very productive, very, uh, it's been a really good time for soul searching and really digging in and finding out who I am. So it's been great. It's been great. Now you're the host, as we all know, of the One <laughs> Mike Night podcast. So I wouldn't be remiss if we were to talk about that. But before we get into that, you're also an actor as well too. And I went through some of your acting credits, and I didn't know you were also in Love Jones, which is like a cult classic. <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, Miss Stevie, you're getting me on this one, because see, when you talk about Love Jones, you're telling everybody my age, but yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, that was a great experience. Um, actually, I was a, a stand-in for Bill Bellamy. So I was handpicked by the director just to be there on set as what they call the second team. So when they adjust the lights and they have the, you know, put him in place, I would be the one that sits there and they adjust the lights on. Oh. So yeah, that, that was okay. a, it was a great experience. And you grew up listening to your grandfather's music group and that's how you perform in a weekly radio show. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Um, so I was born in Nashville, Tennessee. And um, as most people know, Nashville is the heart and soul of gospel music. So I lived there, you know, as I was young and my grandfather was a pretty famous gospel singer. And I would have to say he probably was, his group was the forerunner to what we know now as commercial gospel music. So his, his group was called the Fireside Singers and also called the Fairfield Four. So they were the predecessors to Bobby Jones and all those people that we see right now, Hezekiah Walker, all those people. So we grew up listening to him on the radio and watching him on TV. You know, so that was a that was a pretty big part of my life. Now, another thing people don't know about you is at the age of seven, you and your sister and your two cousins formed a singing and dancing group. You we know, sure did. Oh my God. A little bit about that. You're killing me with this. Yeah. Shout out to my cousin who's on right now, Katanya Fernandez. She was one of them um, who has her own beauty uh, business right now. But um, yeah, we grew up, we just, we were singers and dancers. And uh, I'd have to say my older sister and her brother was sort of the leads of the group. So my sister would sing and my cousin and I would do the backup and we had choreographed dance moves and we would perform in the, uh, the talent shows there. We won awards. Uh, so we won them together. And then I think two of them won separate awards too, doing some stuff singularly. So just growing up, you know, there, we, we all had music, we all had acting, we all had, you know, some sort of entertainment in our life. So it's, it's just in my blood, it's in my blood. And you also hosted a kids TV show in middle school. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I have to say, um, first and foremost, uh, shout out to my mother because I grew up watching her on stage. That's the first job I can remember her having. Mm -hmm. So I know I remember when I was five, I used to sit in the audience 
at the theater company and she would be the lead in the show and I would just sit there like this and watch my mom perform. So that kind of gave me the incentive to, to be an actor. Um, but as I, went, as I went on, I was doing shows all along and in middle school, I hosted a show, it was called Kidsburg. And it would do, uh, I guess it would, you know, profile your school, your middle school. So you would go around and talk to the people in the school and you have different segments. And uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a fun time too. So that was my first job hosting. That was my first job hosting. And look at you now, now you're the host of One Mike Night, which has been here for what, 12 plus years and counting. So tell us a little bit about One Mike Night. Yeah, sure. So One Mike Night actually has been here. This is a 17th year of One Mike Night. One Mike Night started as a, uh, a little get together. I, uh, I used to manage a restaurant in the West Village and I wanted to create some revenue for the business. It was slow. So I invited a woman by the name of Marie Tree, Marie Tree Garrett, shout out to Marie Tree. Um, she's doing big things right now. Uh, I invited her to come there and play guitar. And I said, let's just see what happens. Maybe we can generate some business. So she actually I invited her there to play the cello. She was a celloist. And she said, well, what if I show up? I'm just learning how to play the guitar. Can I bring my guitar and play that? And so I said, yeah, just you know, bring it on, see what we can do. So she got a guitar, she started playing the guitar. I kicked the door open and people just started walking in. And I was like, wow, okay, make a little money here. You know, I'm bartending, doing whatever I'm doing. And I said, well, listen, next week you invite some more musicians, I'll invite some poets, you know, some singers, some actor friends, and maybe we can get a little something started here. So we did that. The next week, more people came in, you know, some poetry. Next thing you know, we have Grammy Award winning artists in this place, right? So it was just a little restaurant in the West Village and it was residential above the, above the place, above the restaurant. Music was great. So one night, um, this owner of a bar in the East Village came and he said, man, this is great. You know, the place is packed. This is great. If you ever need a place, just let me know. I have a nightclub on the Lower East Side. You can come there. I was like, all right, thank you. His name was Chris. I said, all right, Chris, thank you. Later on that evening, a singer by the name of Corey Glover comes in. And you guys might know him from Living Color, the group Living Color. He was in Jesus Christ Superstar on Broadway. This man has a powerful, powerful voice. So Corey was singing a song. He blew the roof off of that place. Man, the neighbors came down. They were like, listen, we like the music, but you got to go. <laughs> so they kicked us out. So I got on the phone right there. I called Chris. I said, Chris, you're not going to believe this, but we need to come to your nightclub next week. He's like, yeah, come on over. Long story short, we stayed there for seven years. And then um, it was great. I had indie, indie bands coming through, you know, three, four indie bands playing. Uh, everybody came through. Lady Gaga, more Grammy award-winning artists. We held fundraisers there for the Women's Prison Association. We did a night for Sade. Um, Sade didn't make it, but her band came through. You know what I mean? Just like people, connections, artist connections, and it just created something really good, something special for artists. We had the biggest poetry event of all times in New York. Um, yeah, it really did something. So over the pandemic, um, long story short, over the pandemic, we switched, I switched it to a virtual thing. So now it's a podcast where I interview artists um, and hopefully bring some value to people with inspirational stories of their journey and life, you know, and wealth, wellness. And you've had everyone from therapists to activists to artists come on and promote their projects. This project in this podcast is so refreshing to come in and tune in and watch because the conversation like we're having meaningful conversations right now and speaking of creating an art what music inspires you to create what music inspires me today or just in general to create oh to create. create well i have to say going back to what you brought up earlier love jones was kind of the the way i started that whole that whole one mic night thing, because if you remember that scene in Love Jones where he was doing the poetry, the Red State was doing the poetry, mm -hmm. that kind of stuck in the back of my mind. So um, the soundtrack from Love Jones is always something for me. Um, but music today, I listen to everything because of the way I grew up, you know, gospel, soul, uh, Latin music, um, country, rock, everything. My, you know, it's just, I think when you expand your mind to listen to things like that, you know, it can only expand your outlook on life and how you connect and relate to people. 
you know so i listen to everything everything inspires me people and art inspires me in general you inspire me you don't know how how much that makes you feel because (laughs) we're both doing the same thing and it's very competitive but we always have to make sure that we're rooting on and supporting the next person and the next person absolutely what's life without collaboration Yes. You have to have collaboration. You have to, you know, support other people around you. It's not, it doesn't have to be a competitive field. We're all artists. And what you do, even though we're doing something that's similar, you're bringing something very unique to the table that I don't have. So I watch you and I learn, and hopefully other people watch me and they learn, and we share our gifts together. That's what it's all about. Jay Evans in the comment. Shout outs to Jay Evans. Make sure you guys go and check out Jay Evans Talk Show. We always try to have refreshing conversations here on my platform. And when I tune into One Mic Night, if you know, Thursdays when you go on and you have these amazing guests just hearing their stories and we talk, hearing you talk about mental health, which is something that I talk a lot about on my platform as well, too, and self care, making sure that you tend to love yourself more than anything. 100%. Absolutely. Most important. Most important. Your mom says thank you for having Marshall today. <laughs> Shout out to my mom for everything. The number one fan right there. How does it feel to be surrounded by love? I know for me, because I texted my girlfriend today, I was texting my friend, my sis, and she said, you're about to hit a huge milestone. I was telling her, yes, about to hit 500 interview. You're interviewed 499 out of this week. So wow. next week, wow. we should hit that 500. And I was telling her, I said, said it's overwhelming sometimes for me it feels overwhelming to be surrounded by so much love but for you how does it feel for me uh it's great i think you get what you give you know and if you're giving love you can only you can only get it back you know and you have to be open to receive it so i know like with you um you just like you said your platform is about love it's about sharing people's stories it's about helping and giving value to people so it's no it's no surprise to me that you have 499 shows there's no surprise and i I hope you revel in the fact that what you're doing is really something special you know because it is and for me it's the same thing you know i've been doing this for a while but when you find when you find that pocket when you find sort of what your purpose is at the moment like you you have to be consistent you know it may not bring you a lot of money and that shouldn't be the driving force behind it yeah you know what brings you what what it brings you is wealth and wealth in the sense of joy so if you're doing doing your passion and you do it every day and you love it it's going to bring you wealth and that's what we're looking for and it does bring me joy i i feel great talking and having these conversations because i know they're meaningful to people that are at home going, they could be going through something. You never know what a person's testimony or story could be just in that time. Right. So it's amazing to sit and have conversations like this. Shout outs to my girl, Hypnotic Skincare. And <laughs> Tanya says she is so proud of you, Mark. Oh, thank you. Shout out to Chris Grant. I see you down in Florida. I hope you're safe. Yes, What's Chris. Up, I see you too. In Atlanta. And this yes it's hurricane season so prayers up to florida and atlanta we have been getting some crazy weather down here in south carolina rain non-stop but now the sunshine is out so there's no rain today thank god we did have a power outage right after i did my interview with roger payan i want to say that i would have been five so things are back to regular um hypnotic skincare shout outs to you girl and Jay Evans says, Marcos is definitely a vibe. Well said. I see you, Luther. Thank you. Granville, I see you. This, this is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this conversation. This is what you're going to get when you come into the dollhouse. It's refreshing conversation and amazing guests. Now, speaking of movies and scenes, everybody's talking about the visual. Which film? would you like to most have had or been in? Ooh. I don't know. See, this is a tough question for me, and I have this conversation all the time because I'm an 
indie filmmaker, so I don't watch a lot of commercial films. Every now and then, there's, I'll see something that sparks my interest, I'll go see. Like this weekend, I'm gonna go see The Equalizer. Denzel does it for me, and that genre does it for me. But for the most part, I watch indie films, independent films, because I make independent films. So there have been a lot of independent films along the way that I like. Um, I can't really say that I like to be in them. As far as creating, there are a lot of things I've created. I'm sitting on a script right now that I hope in the next year I'll produce and, and, and make it. Um, it's a series, so look out for that. It's, uh, it's, it's very interesting. It's a, it's a retro. It's a period piece, it's a period meaning in the 1990s. And Ooh. I don't want to give away too much, but it's, it's really it's a behind the scenes look at something. And I think you guys will like it. And that was going to be my next question to you <laughs> as a producer. How do you avoid divulging exciting plot to exciting plot twists before they air? Um, you just have to give a little teaser. You know what I mean? You try to make people excited about what you're doing because if you're excited about it, everybody else would be excited about it. You know, and I think along with independent films, like I said, it's not. It's not along the commercial veins. It's not necessarily for everyone. It's the filmmaker's point of view. They can say what they want to say. It doesn't have to have a happy ending. It doesn't have to have, you know, the ending that you think it is. But I think we as artists, it's our job to make people question certain things, make people, you know, show our point of view and let them question whether we're right, whether we're wrong, whether they agree, what their own feelings are about something. You know, so that's our job as artists. So that's what independent um, filmmakers and artists do. They create, you know, make you think about things. If you had the chance to put something on Billboard worldwide next week, what would it be? I would put love. Love. Mm. I put one word, love. And I would hope people would Look at it Beautiful. every single day when you're walking, when you're driving to work, um, when it's on TV, something flashes by, commercial, everything. Just love. We need to love each other more. There's so much division in this world right now. We all really need to just come together, you know, and have empathy for each other and understand that everybody's experiences are not the same, but we have to understand where other people are coming from, you know, and deal with people in that way. We don't have to have the same idea, the same thought on things, but just understand that you're, you're, you're okay. You're, you know, you can have your own uh, thoughts on something, but just have empathy for another person. If they need help, if they need love, if they need a hug, you know, I'm, I'm knocking down, let's knock down all this machismo and all this other stuff. I see people every day, uh, you know, I, you need a hug. I give you a hug. Let's, let's give love. Let's, let's give love everybody worldwide absolutely <laughs> and the comments are second in that they're agreeing yeah. with it if, if you see love drop some hearts in there come on yeah what was the last, last thing that made you smile the last thing that made me smile um you know what i'll be honest with you is when i looked in the mirror a few minutes ago because i looked in the mirror and I said, you're not as young as you were. You look different than you did yesterday, but you love what you see. I'm very confident about who I am. You know, I'm confident I have wrinkles. I'm confident with that. It's good. This is who I have evolved to be. So I just laughed. I laughed in my mirror while I was brushing, and brushing my teeth. Yeah. Yeah. And it's those little things, self-reflection. You sit in that mirror and you look and you just, you take everything in, every flaw, every detail, everything. And Timmy Deo says, I'm smiling already. Thank you guys. I am giving someone a hug. Awesomeness. Beautiful <laughs> I love, love that. Love it. I'm Thank coming you. up to Shout out to home. Shane Tull. That's the psychotherapist. Please, guys, make sure you buy his book. He's on the podcast with me. Shane Mark Toll, licensed clinical psychotherapist, The Mental Health Pandemic. You got to get his book, new book dropping soon. Now, do you have any personal rituals before you go on and do one mic night? Um, not really a personal ritual. I like to know a little bit about my guest. 
I do a little introspection and I like it to be organic. You know, I don't really have questions that I'm going to ask. I like to listen. I like to ask, listen and respond, you know, take in the information and then respond. So that's, that's my only ritual. Just know their history, know their background, and then just have an organic conversation with people. That's people in general, people in general. There has to be an exchange of information. You have to receive information and then respond in order to have that connection. So I try to do that with everybody. Timmy says, oh, you got my name. I love you, Sis Hugs from Nigeria. And I love <laughs> Nigeria. Thank you guys for showing me so much love. Self-acceptance and confidence are everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I thrive on confidence. That's actually one of my affirmations when I get up. I am confident. And the people around me see the confidence within me. And that inspires them as well, too. So you got to have that being into this business. Yeah. Do you feel like you attract more people when you exude that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I grew up with siblings. And I wasn't always this confident. I always had my own insecurities. We all do. We have our own flaws and insecurities. But now I just learn to embrace it. Because this is what makes me even more amazing and more awesome. So right. confidence draws people in. When people see that, they're just like, oh, if she's doing it, I can do it also as well, too. So right. try to talk to her. And I see that because even when I ask you that question, there's two things. There's the confidence and then there's the humility, too, because you kind of blush. And when you have those two things together, you know, it's not arrogance. It's confidence. And then you have a little bit of humility. That's what the attraction is for people. Yes. Right? self-reflection self-acceptance i've learned every morning before i get up this is my ritual before even before doing an interview i always research analyze my guests make sure that i get everything right do my research on the guests so that i know what i'm talking about so I interviews but i also take time to reflect in the moment and be still within myself so i say my prayers i talk to god and then I do my morning affirmations. That's my ritual. Every morning I get up. So that's what keeps me so grounded and centered. And I've just learned to tune out different things. I've, I haven't really had any trolls or negativity, but I don't let those things phase me or the tears. You right. know, I try to stay in my lane and stay grounded and realize my purpose. And my purpose is to bring happiness to people. Right. It's to bring confidence to people. Because some people just can't get up and be bold and take risks like that. It takes comp confidence can't be built overnight. It's a process. And for me, I had to realize that process within myself that you've got this, you know, right. just for some reassurance and surrounding myself with the right kind of people. That's right. And we can't worry about what other people think about us because that certainly brings the mental anguish that creates trauma. You have to do what you have to do you know, and, and, and get that confidence and continue on because we are who we are. And once you learn to accept yourself for who you are, there's nothing, anything, nothing that anyone can do to, to bring that down, to bring you down. You have to just go straight forward. What was your aha moment in your career when you realized, okay, wow, I could have did this different or maybe I could have did this another way? You know what? I'm still on a high. Every day is a high for me. Every day that I wake up, I realize that I get a chance to do what I'm doing. I get a chance to talk to people. I get a chance to hopefully bring some kind of value to people's life. I'm an actor. Uh, I'm a singer. I dance. I, you know, I do what I want to do. I have, we all have the ability to do that. It's just a matter of not having the fear of doing it. I'm a creator. You can do anything you want to do. You know, you can do anything you want to do. I'm not scared. I ain't scared. I ain't scared at all. <laughs> I started out pre-med in college, you know, and I switched to theater, you know, almost halfway through because I knew this is what I wanted to do. You can't be scared. Fearless. And making career moves can be scary sometimes. It can be very scary trick is to not let fear deter you from following your dream or right. passion. Right. And I've had to start over. Who hasn't had to start over? But it's just a stepping stone for you to increase to the next level of your greatness. Right. So keep going. Right. And fear is yourself. It's you holding you back. It's you holding you back. So once you let that go, 
It's like having stage fright before you go on stage. There's no reason to have stage fright. Take that energy and make your performance more powerful. Redirect that energy, you know? That's what fear is. It's your own self. You know, maybe you're afraid that you won't succeed or you won't be successful. You won't make the money. You won't. Someone's going to judge you. It's you building up all the stuff yourself. You got to let it go. Just let it go. And I've learned that starting this platform, I didn't I was like, okay, what if people don't like it? What if people don't like the delivery? I, all of these thoughts, and I've gotten to the point where I've stopped watching my interviews back and critiquing the work, pointing out the work. But it's just like, I don't, people don't see what I see, but we're perfect, perfectionists in, our, in what we do. Right. So I've learned to stop doing that, being my own worst critic and finding the positive in things. That's what I've learned to start doing, finding the positive instead of putting myself down. Right. That's right. And I think, you know, you have to be, because something like this, when you're doing a live, you have no control over it. When I do my podcast, it's taped live, but I also have the ability to edit if I don't see something I like. So you have to be confident. This is you. You're putting yourself out there. And once you do something like this, it's about being vulnerable. And the scare the fear comes from being vulnerable and with vulnerability comes authenticity so once you become authentic with yourself that's what people are buying into that's what your friendships are built on you know that's what people want to see they want to see the authentic you you don't have to put up the charades and the smoke and the mirrors and all that people are buying into who you are is, is she authentic is she being herself you know that's what they want to that's what they want to see that's who they like I mean, a lot of people do like the, you know, the fake, but once, once, once all that's done, who is the person? Who are you? Right? Exactly. And that's something that I set out to do, being different from other hosts who have platforms like this podcast and shows. I want it to be different. I dare it to be different. And... That is something that I put on my vision board as well, too. The key word is dare. I want it to step out because I was like, okay, I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of this. But you can't live your life in fear. You definitely I live my life at my own expense and at my own limitations. And I think that is what draws people even more. Because they can do it as well, too, and make moves in their career and accept. Right. And so what does that come from for you? You know, And that's, that's what we're all searching for. For you, where does it come from? Where does it come from that, you know, that confidence and, and, and knowing that you have to continue on and be you? Where does that come from? My mom, mom my mom raised an, an, a powerful woman. I don't like saying strong because there are days when I want to be vulnerable in that place. But I get it from my mom. My mom has been my biggest inspiration and she keeps me going. She encourages me. Even, she, even sometimes she'll tell me, take a break. Start over again. Things like this happen. People understand. So I get it from her as well as the people who support my friends, family. That's where I get that confidence from. Even when I'm feeling down and less than, sometimes my ego will get in the way. And I'm just like, nah, I don't want to ask them for any advice. But I swallow my pride and I go and I ask the person for advice anyway. Even I have to get advice. Ego advice. is a nasty beast. Ego is a nasty beast, and we have to let that go, like you said. Yeah, you got to let that go. We can't live our life with the ego. And that, that's what I've learned. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask people for help. Don't be afraid to ask people for advice, because I've always been the one that would try to get things done properly and on time and try to do it myself independent, because that's how my, my dad and my mom raised us, to be mm -hmm. independent. But I've learned that sometimes you have to go and ask people for help and help. You do. You do. And also, and in the words of, you know, psychotherapist Shane Tull, be gentle on yourself. We can't be too hard on ourselves either. You know, we can only do what we can do. We're human. We, there are going to be times when we're vulnerable that we need help. You know, what we do, what we're doing is we're creating certain things. We're creating a show. We're doing it pretty much by ourselves. But there are times when we need help. I, you know, we, I host my show, I edit my show, I, you know, shoot the show, I book the guests, same with you, I'm sure. 
So, you know, we, we need help at times. We need help. And you can't be afraid to ask for help. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 100 For you, challenges. We're going to get into challenges. For you being an actor, what is some of the most challenging roles that you've ever played throughout your career? Mm. Challenging. Um, I'd have to say, just most recently, I did a production, and uh, shout out to the writer and director. His name is Marcus Harmon. Um, he wrote a play called The 20th Anniversary, and it's about the 20th. 20th anniversary of the 9-11 incident here in New York, where the, you know, the towers fell. So it's about two, um, two firefighters who lost their third best friend in the towers. So they convene after 20 years, which just happened last year of the World Trade Center falling. They convene yes. in a bar and they talk about what's happened in the 20 years. So my character had PTSD. So for me, as as an actor, it was probably the most challenging role I had because I had to research PTSD and I had to watch tons of footage on 9-11 and firefighters and go to firehouses and talk to fire, firemen um, and embody that character in a way that it touched people, you know, and uh, with that show, I, I mean, I think we did it, you know, uh, it just, yeah, it was very challenging. And it actually took me a, a couple of weeks after the show to shake out of that character. I was so wow. deep in it because it's such a psychological thing. Um, yeah, it took me a couple of weeks to get out of that darkness, that dark place. Now, the next Monday after next week makes 22 years since the World Trade Center 9-11 happened in 2001. Right. So my heart goes out to those loved ones that they lost in this. My heart goes out to the families. This. How did you find yourself pulling out of this character and going back to, okay, I'm Marcos now. I'm no longer the character. Um. It's tough because the show is sort of ongoing. So I'm having to do it over and over. We performed the show three times in the last year. So I've done sort of one, two, three, four, maybe four shows in the last year, kind of off Broadway shows. But it's tough. I mean, just a preparation, going back and watching the footage again and, you know, moments before going on stage, having to get to a place where, you know, I connect with that person and, you know, thinking back to my acting classes back in school, you know, when you get to that place and maybe you're in a dark place like this where you're, you know, your mind just goes. But afterwards, you just, it's so heavy in your brain. I don't know how I shake it. It just takes time to release all that because you you, you literally do have triggers, you know, that, that trigger you and you remember. And you, it's like you're back, you're the person living in this situation. And I know people like, um, What's the actor's name that played the Joker? Um, you know, he, he, yeah, Heath Ledger, same thing. Like thinking, like getting into that character because it's such a dark place. You could hardly shake out of those characters. You really can, can, can hardly shake out of them. Timmy says, we, we should have this kind of topic over and over, Marco. And sis, well, well done. Thank you. So <laughs> Thank you. Because I know it's, um, who was it? It was Lupita and Wango when she did the film Us. She said she literally had to detox this character out of her because she was going into a very, very dark place. You so that really happens. Do. It does. It does. A really dark place. Because you want to be so connected with the character and every nuance would be what the character does. So someone, like, if you have PTSD and you study what PTSD is, you know, you're living the moments, every moment. So when you're doing live theater, which is great, um, my co-actor might do something. Shout out to Harley Erickson, who played uh, my co-actor in the show, um, award-winning actor, I might mention. Um, he, if he does something different that night, then my reaction has to stay in character, you know, in PTSD, and what would my reaction be? So you're, you're living deep in those characters. What advice would you give to 
an actor on preparing for a role that requires a challenge? Um, I think that's, that's sort of acting 101. They tell you do your homework and your homework is consisting of uh, understanding the script, dissecting the script, um, finding out the background of the character, finding out where the character could possibly go at the end of the script. And then it's all the actions in between the lines is what makes a powerful actor. So the lines are there, but what are you doing in between? What would the character do in between those lines? Would the character, you know, pick up the bottle slowly, sip it like this, which means something, or would the character pick it up like this? So it's everything that you do in between the lines. It's the homework that you're putting in, you know, knowing the character and every move and every nuance. Now, we're going to do some games here with Marco, and then we're going to take some questions from you guys in the audience as well too that are watching um the new this is a new game that we came up with okay. and it is called the one thing people don't know so i'm going to take a turn and i'm going to tell something about myself that people won't know and then marcos is going to tell something about his stuff that people don't so take it away what is one thing that people do not know about marco hmm one thing that people don't know about Marcos. Um, wow, I don't, gosh, that's a hard one. Marcos used to be a hot boy <laughs> in the clubs. <laughs> that's probably it. Yeah, Michael, Marcos had a spicy life. Spicy life. I might seem pretty conservative now, and uh, but yeah, I had a spicy life. I traveled all over the world. Okay, one thing people don't know about Miss C. Um, well, I'm a little bit of a neat freak. I have OCD very, very bad. I like to keep things organized in one place. And I think it's because of my brother and my father's military background. Everything has to be organized for me. I'm a very much a neat freak and I'm a germaphobe. So when this yeah. pandemic hit, I was nervous. I was scared, wiping down the doorknobs, wiping out everything that I touched. I don't care if it was a makeup brush, flat iron, hair spray. <laughs> really? I would wipe down. So yes, I have OCD. It's one thing about me is that I like everything to be in order. I like everything to be neat. Yeah. Interesting. I do too, but I don't think, I mean, yeah, I'm not like, everything has to be in order but i'm one of those people who when i leave home the bed has to be made no dishes in the sink like that type of thing but i'm not like crazy about it i'm not crazy i try to keep everything done in the house as well too, so that's one thing that people don't know about i want to give a shout out to dominic cologne too who is an award-winning writer um brilliant a uh, playwright actor everything latino community shout out to you Please come on my show too. What is one thing that people don't know about Marcos? One thing that people don't know about what? Marcos. Um, one thing that people don't know about me, I don't know. I think, I, I think I'm pretty open about everything. I don't really think there's anything that people don't know about me. I try to be as authentic and upfront and, uh, open as as ever i mean people can ask me things and i tell them i mean it's not i just try to live kind of a public life because that's the authentic me you know if yes. you want to know something ask i mean i don't think there's anything that you see here that's any different than who i am i'm the same person today as i was yesterday you know so be tomorrow essentially i'll say in the essential part of it meaning like a good person oh. honest like those type of things but yeah Absolutely. And if you're in this business, you're in the limelight, it's like people think they know everything about you, but you only know what you put out there. Right. If you keep it personal to yourself, like I keep certain things to myself mm -hmm. and I let people see that transparency on this platform, that vulnerability, because when you're in the limelight, you're you're vulnerable. People right. know they just like they have access to you. 
So the only way that you can keep things to yourself is keep it to yourself. And I know I keep a diary, so I write things down. You know, what I'm feeling, my thoughts. It's great to write and it's therapeutic. So that's another thing that people don't know about me, that I do. How often do you go back to your diary and how, how, how do you feel when you do that? Because that's, that's an important and that's yeah. a good thing to have. And I go through and I read every one of them that I've had. Every diary that I've had, I go through and I read. What was I thinking on this day? And what could have been different or what I could have done different, you know, mood-wise? And how often do I go back? When, and when I have my downtime, when I'm not even doing an interview or style by Stevie, I just go through. It's good to pick up the pieces or look at photographs or go through some of your achievements in life. I know I would go through my high school yearbook and I would take the time to go through my diary as well too. So it's those little things that you cherish because you never know, you never know. Right, that's, that's good. That's actually, yeah, that's definitely why you should keep a diary or some sort of written journal about your life because when you are feeling down, you go back and you can, you know, revalidate yourself. You can help your, your confidence because like you said, you may be down one day, so Look at that. See? And what does it say? That? Stay on the front. Choose joy. Choose joy. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Let me read some of you guys' comments. Um, Katanya wants to know what was your favorite role, and your mom says you are a good friend to those you care for. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Favorite role? I would have to say uh, favorite role would be... I did this, um, wow, back my first professional show. It was a Caribbean version of Medea. It was called Pecan. And <laughs> I was still in college, yeah, I was still in college at the time. But my good friend, who is an incredible writer, you might know her as Lydia Diamond, she brought me into the show. So I went in as the show was already running, they lost somebody, but I was the principal dancer in the show. So I did, you know, like a, the Caribbean African dances in the show and just the whole cast, they were all professional actors and I was so in awe of everybody. That had to be my favorite role, being the Pecan dancers. Yeah. yeah. If you could go back in time, what would, what would you tell your younger self? What would I tell my younger self? Um, you're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah, I have to say, I don't really feel like, like I had too many unsure moments. And I guess thanks to my mom, because my mom always sort of guided me along the way, but left a lot of room for my own creativity. So within the confines of being a parent she allowed me to choose where I want to go and what I want to do so I've never really had you know just follow your heart follow your dreams you know whatever you want to do you can do it you have the power you know just learn learn try experiment you know yeah that's it that's it Jay Evans says I can see Marco playing Teddy Pendergrass in a bio. If <laughs> That's who... funny. Uh, yeah, that might be coming up soon, actually. Somebody has a script they threw at me. But um, I, yeah, that and uh, maybe a little Marvin Gaye. I shaved my beard off. So all you guys know who knew me with the beard, I did a little, little Marvin thing, too. So uh -oh. yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's coming up. I do want to say that I do have a, a, a film coming up. It's in the process. And I'm just going to be an actor in this movie. It's a Spider-Man movie. And shout out to Brandon Ricketts for this. Yeah, it's a fan-made Spider-Man, the more Miles Morales version. So I'm going to be playing Spider-Man's uncle, who Aaron Davis, who uh, doubles as a villain, too. So that's any actor's dream. So look All out right. for that coming up soon. Yeah. Stay tuned for that, yes, you guys. Yes, definitely stay tuned. Now, the power of manifestation with the year halfway out, we're now going, we're now in September, October, before you know it, 2024 is rolling around the corner. What is something that you're looking forward to for the new year of 2024? 2024. Uh, I have some plans for One Mic Night, the brand One Mic Night. Um, 
So hopefully, I don't want to say what it is, but hopefully that'll that'll come through. And I'm going to direct all my energy towards that. Um, continue creating, continue uh, acting, continue creating films and uh, content for people, and hopefully inspiring people, uh, making connections with Miss Stevie. So um, yeah, hopefully. But yeah, definitely have a big plan for one mic night. So stick around for that. Do we have any other questions for Marcos, ladies and gentlemen? The rapid five, you have to tell us five things Marcos can't live with. Five things Marcos can't live without. Uh, number one, of course, the queen, my mother. Number two, music. Number three, um, Mike Knight. And number four, I mean, number five would be, um, wow, what's the other thing I can't live without? I don't know, I think it's only four. It's, I can't even think of anything else. Um, yeah, it would have to be my computer, I guess. That's it. Everything else I have, everything else I have, I don't need much. Don't need much in life. Love. Somebody said love. That's true. Yeah. I said that in the beginning. So, yeah, that's a given. <laughs> that's a good one, J.M. That is definitely Always. A good one. Right. Always love. Do we have any questions for myself or Marcos? Again, this conversation is refreshing. Alan Brown. Katanya says Alan Brown. Alan Brown, of course. My dog, Alan Brown. Alan Brown, Chocolate Lab. Of course, I can't live without Alan Brown. She said <laughs> family. And family, Cousin Cat. Again, that being surrounded by love is just an amazing thing. It's, That's right. It's amazing. And to me, sometimes it's a little like, oh my God, how do I receive it? You receive it all. Because God put it here. God put people in your life for a reason. My mom tells me that all the time. You know, people come and they go, but you know who the ones that are going to be there with you from beginning. Support system. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Uh -oh. Now, okay. you know, we didn't ask, I didn't get the, the five questions. We did that last time, but I still want to ask you, what do you think is the most challenging thing about your childhood for you? What was the most challenging thing for your childhood? The most challenging thing with my childhood, mm -hmm. I would have to say discovery myself coming into my own and being I would have to say sheltered like restrained mm -hmm. now that I'm in my adulthood and as I got into my teenage years that's when I busted out and I said okay I'm free I can finally be myself I can finally authentically be myself and live in my truth and not have to worry or hide or question because of my mom and she I mean, would we'd always have conversations. She asked me, she said, this is you, you be who you are fully. You're my child and I love you and I appreciate you for who you are. So that's what I would say to anybody who's ever had a rough upbringing because mine wasn't always teachers and friends. So. Yeah. How, how important do you think is, is that in the scheme of life, not just for you, but for anyone who's struggling with any kind of, you know, insecurity about who they are? How important is what I can hear? How important, how important do you think that is to have the support of, you know, your family? And what do people do if they don't have that support? Because I know oh, I have support in my family. Yeah, for everything. Very important. Mm -hmm. You need your family to back you up. But if you don't have the support, there are people who care. I don't want to hear people say, there's nobody who cares. There are people out here who listen and care. Believe it or not. But it starts at home. It starts with the loved ones, the love of your mother, your father. It starts at home. You build that relationship with them. But if they're not reciprocating at that, then sometimes you have to say, okay, I bow out gracefully. I know you brought me into this world, but sometimes you have to learn to just close the curtain. Like at the end of a masterpiece, you have to close the curtain. Right. 
And it's difficult if you're a child growing up and you don't have that support, you don't know what to do, you don't know where to go. And you, you know, you're seeking friends from, you know, people who, who could be your friends to help you. It's hard. It's hard. But I mean, all I can say is hang in there. And then, you know, when you get to a point where you can find someone, and then you go. This is where some of these subcultures came from, as we know. They were the families. And this is unfortunately why people turn to gangs and other, other cultures, because yeah. they don't have the support of their family, you know, in situations growing up. So um, I don't even know what to say. Just hang in there. And now, you know, we're in a, a social media age where maybe you can make friends online or, you know, you have the ability to call someone, you know, a self-help uh, for a therapist to talk to. They can help guide you and, and take you by the hand. So, yeah, we need those. We need those. And you're not too big to have a mentor. I have a mentor. Right. Um, Miss Melody XOXO is my mentor. And she'll tell me things behind the scenes. And she'll say, since your delivery, so far it's been amazing with her mentoring me and telling me, okay, this is how you need to handle this situation. And this is how this is going to go when it comes to being in the LGBTQ plus community. She's been an excellent, excellent mentor to me. So I give all thanks to Miss Melody for having her. Excellent, excellent. Now, you know I had to flip it on you. I had to ask you a question. It wouldn't be that Marcos would be, Luis without that. <laughs> that was because I had to dig back into my childhood. But uh -huh. and yeah. It could probably impact the next person who's had that same experience. Of course. Of uh, not feeling like they don't know who they are. Right. But when you grow up and you get into your get of age, when you become, you know, a teen, growing up into your own, a young adult, you figure out who you are. Right. And you say, okay, this is me. And I can either accept it or, or sit here confused. And I would rather accept me, all of me, and my truth. Right. And also, you know, people receive information different ways. I know people who have had supportive families or what I consider supportive families who still can't receive what the family is giving them and they have to venture off and figure out who they are by themselves. Oh, yeah. So, you know, and that's just in any any community. It doesn't have to be, you know, LGBTQ plus. It can be any community as you're growing up. Just trying to find yourself. It's hard. So I guess that's kind of the point. Um, you know, you got to find help and you got to find that network of people who are there to support you in whichever way you need it. Self-discovery, self-reflection. Yeah. Right. All right, fans and dolls, do we have any questions for myself or Marcos? While you guys are typing, I'm going to close out with the final thought of the day, which comes from Lady Gaga. I am my own sanctuary, and I can be reborn as many times as I choose throughout my life. And that comes from Lady Gaga. The power of change is beautiful, and it starts and it begins within yourself. You look in that mirror and you say, okay, what do I want to change about this? Stuff? Not aesthetically. Don't go out here and get surgery or anything, but just think about what's in the heart. Think about what's in the mind, because I believe in mind, body, and soul. Without the mind you wouldn't have a heart. Without the heart, you wouldn't have a soul. So think about all of these things. Internalize it in the moment. Um, it was Jacqueline Harris who said this before she goes on set for taping for a role or whatever. She says she, she sits and she internalizes in the moment. She sits and she thinks in the moment. And that's what you sometimes have to do. It's called self-reflection as we just talked about. So sometimes you have to change things for the better. Making a career move can be scary, but you have to leap in order to get to better success. And I've had to start over. Who hasn't had to start yeah, over go back to the drawing board? Even some of the greats have had to start over. Denzel Washington is an But you find that place where you're confident within yourself enough to say, okay, I can handle this. And one of my affirmations is I am capable of handling anything that comes my way. I am invincible. I am unbreakable. You keep saying these affirmations to yourself because people will try to tear you down to their level. And the key trick is to not let them. So embrace change. It's beautiful. It's amazing. 
it can seem scary, but it's like starting a new chapter or what I like to call the rebirthing process. Rebirth, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing to gain from complacency either. You know, you got to take some risks and, and get out there. Yeah. And step outside of your comfort zone. It can, it. it can be challenging, but at the end of the day, trust me, it's so worth it. I've had to take constructive criticism from even some of my colleagues on doing interviews. And I take it, I don't get, before I was, when I, in my younger years, when I first started, I would get, I was like, okay, are you trying to slight me on the side? <laughs> but now I've just learned to take it in and I'm like, okay, I receive it and I can work on that. And the advice that they've given me works nine times out of 10. Right. So you got to be willing to, to, again, push that ego to the side and take other people's advice. Our egos can be our own worst enemy sometimes. And that's a what beast, I mean. A beast. It can be a beast. So yeah. that would be my advice to anybody. But if we, I don't see any questions, Marcos, do you have any gems that you would like to leave? Uh, uh, no, just live your life with love and know that whatever you want to do in life, you can do it. Step out of your comfort zone and take a risk, you know, because. With complacency, you, you, you learn nothing, you gain nothing. So uh, yeah, do that. And also I wanna thank you for having me on the show. Like I said, I appreciate you. I watch you all the time and thank you for sharing your light with me and with everybody else. So keep shining, keep shining. Thank you so much, Marcos. This has been long overdue, long overdue and it's refreshing. And watching your podcast is refreshing. On a Thursday night, I could be going through something and I tune in. And the conversation is so so thought provoking and engaging. Yeah, Tuesdays, Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Yeah. All right. There you go. Let everyone know where they can check out One Mic Night podcast and follow you. One Mic Night is O N E M I C N I T E. It's One Mic Night everything, and you can follow me. Click above Marcos Luis M A R C O S L U I S. Bam. And this will be uploaded to Style by Stevie Daytime and One Mic Night will be tagged. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Joining me next week, me and my co-host Nanny Killer will be back with an all-new episode of Tete Tete. He joins me Tuesday. Andre Joseph also joins me. The lineup is already up. And make sure you guys go on and head on over and vote for your favorite outfit of the week because the looks this week have been very, very colorful. So they're up. It's four looks. Have fun with that. Won't be your favorite <laughs> because it's a tough one this week. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and showing so much love and support. Granville says this was excellent. And thank you, Jay. Thank Evans. you, Granville. Thank Phil, you. thanks for joining. Appreciate you. So that is all fashion dog. You guys have an amazing, safe, and blessed Friday weekend and the new month. We're now in September, so the month has went out so fast. So before you know it, it'll be my 30th birthday. My 30th is coming up next month, the Halloween the 31st. So yes, stay tuned for that. I already got my costume, so I'm not going to say what it is. I hope, but stay hope, you, have a, I hope you have a <laughs> virtual birthday we want to see too. All right. I will. I might do something <laughs> special. So, All right. I'll meet you for cocktails online. I'll, all right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Missy. All right. Fashion. Knows. Take care, everyone, and thank you, Marco. Of course. Take care, everyone.